This is part three of Sacred Heart Football Preseason Pass, and we're, we're here right now with offensive coordinator and assistant coach Kevin Bolas. Coach, you handle the offensive linemen, so let's preview that position. Starting your fifth season here, let's talk about first uh, some of the, the, the upperclassmen you have on the offensive line this year. Uh, Bill Romanello's one, Justin Martell. Uh, talk about those two guys and what you expect out of them to, to maybe anchor this unit cutting into the season. Uh, both very good players, uh, very hard workers. Um, come a long, long way since they started with me a few years ago. They're uh, going to be three-year starters now, uh, actually playing together on the left side. Um, they're good friends off the field as well. They work very well together. So we've, we've uh, moved some guys around, um, which I think will benefit us in the long run. Uh, but those two guys, very solid players. And, and talk to uh, talk to me about at, at center. Uh, I know uh, Ben Cunio uh, played a lot last year, especially when Dylan Larson uh, went down with injury. But he looks like he's coming back. So you got a couple guys in the fold who who can hold down that center position. Uh, and, and talk about not not only who who could play there, but what that you know position means uh, on the offensive line. Well, you know, uh, we have a few guys. If you if you come out pre-practice, you'll see that I have five guys taking snaps uh, with our five quarterbacks right now. So you always have to be ready for every situation. Obviously, uh, we, we had some injuries last year. Uh, Dylan had an uh, ACL uh, tear at the end of last year. He missed spring football. He's going to be uh, the, uh, he's the ideal center right now. Been with me. He'd be a four-year starter now uh, this year. He knows the system very well. And he can make all those calls inside and, and kind of keep everything in order. Um, Jake, I think, uh, is also, you know, he played a, a lot for us last year at the position. Um, he's a taller body. I think we benefit more uh, with him playing a tackle spot. Uh, but there's a lot that's involved. Uh, you know, we're going to, I'm sure, eventually talk about the tight end position. I'm fortunate to have offensive tackles that are extremely, extremely athletic. Uh, so we're going to, you might see uh, some offensive tackles in 80s numbers. Um, they can run. They can catch the ball. They certainly give us something in the run game, even with all the unbalanced stuff that we do. Um, to have a, a, a unbalanced line with a tight end backside who's a tackle, um, you know, you talk about uh, the, how important the run game is. I think that's going to give us a big advantage. So there's a, we got a lot of things going on right now. We're real excited about the group that we have. You do talk about the run game, and I know we've hit on this point a few times in the preseason with, with the the idea of, of breaking in a new quarterback uh, as you know competition for who's going to get that job. The running game may take uh, you know precedent here, maybe early on in the season, and, and help that transition. Is that something that you guys and your unit has been focused on uh, as you as you've moved through this preseason? You know, the, the guys in my unit are. They're a lot of fun to work with. They are selfless. And, uh, you know, the, the way that we operate in our meeting room is, you know, yeah, sure, we'd love to run the football and, and be effective running the football, but um, the plays that Coach Gorham called, you know, if he calls a pass play, we certainly have to protect. Um, our number one priority is is putting the team before ourselves and, and uh, doing everything we can to, to win. So, uh, yeah, we, we want to run the football. We are doing some things, uh, some tweaks in our offense to run the football better. If you were at our last scrimmage, uh, you know, we were only about 25% run, but that's also because we have a couple of quarterbacks that we need to see in action and uh, throwing the football and making some good decisions. So, again, I, ideally, in an ideal world, I want to be balanced. I want to be 50-50. I want to keep people on their toes, you know, um, Obviously, if we can run the ball, shorten the game, uh, eat the clock, we'll take that any day of the week. All right, Coach, let's talk about the tight end position. And Rich Rossi, who was an all-conference player last year, kind of that tight end, kind of that wide receiver, moves over, is the starting tight end. But who, who behind him also can we look to uh, get on the field this year, maybe in, in more run situations uh, with blocking and so forth? Well, we have a couple of young guys behind Rich uh, at the pure tight end position. One kid's a freshman, uh, Timmy Goodwin from South Jersey, uh, very good blocker, actually has very good hands. He was an offensive guard uh, in high school that was moved to H-back in an emergency situation then. Um, I don't know how much he'll play, you know, as a young kid. Uh, Robbie Volk, um, who was a converted quarterback here, he's put on about 30 pounds. You know, he's pushing 240, getting better with the blocking, got very good hands and running better routes. Uh, as I said before, in the run game, um, I think Jake Cuneo, Desmond Mighty, uh, whoever is not the, quote, starting, uh, one of the starting tackles, you're going to see them in, in an 80s jersey. Uh, and it, I'm excited to get those guys out and running hitch routes and 
actually see him catch the ball because I think they're going to uh, they're going to surprise some people. All right, coach. Well, thanks for a few minutes of your time today. We'll catch up with you again during the season. This is Ke uh, assistant coach Kevin Bolts is offensive coordinator. Now we're going to talk with uh, defensive coordinator, head assistant coach uh, Dave Wisman. Back here on the preseason pass part three as we preview the defensive backs, and we're here with assistant coach Dave Wisman in his third season and coach your first season as a defensive coordinator. And before we talk about the D backs, let's just talk about the defense in general. You guys are kind of in the middle of your last week at camp here. How's camp gone defensively? And I guess maybe what are some of the new philosophies or new uh, ideas you're bringing to this defense and trying to get the guys to kind of incorporate as you head into the season? Uh, the uh, the camp's gone well so far. Uh, the kids have uh, not gone well. We've been healthy. Uh, we've got some uh, some veterans coming back, which has been good. Uh, and Embler, uh, Brancini, uh, Fair, uh, Keffer up front, which helps us uh, exponentially just from their experience. Um, and, you know, at the second level with Chris Mandis and, uh, and uh, Michael Zambrano, both guys have played and got, got years under their belt, so that experience helps. Um, uh, on the back end, that's where our challenge has been. We've got a mod at the corner who's been good uh, over the past, you know, going to his third year. He's got quite a few games under his belt. Um, but he's really our, our most experienced guy back there, and that's where the, the work for me as a secondary coach has is, is, is been the challenge. Um, Coach Edwards has done a great job with his guys up front, his D linemen. Um, Coach Nolf, you know, he's got some, some, some seasoned veterans there in the middle. So um, the challenge lies for me in the secondary. As far as camp, camp's been good. Um, the kids are playing fast. They're playing physical. Um, my philosophy is that uh, these kids have fun on what they're doing and try to give them a scheme and some pressures and some coverages that uh, – are not too complicated that they can understand, uh, regardless of what anybody gives us on any given night or day. Um, so I'm pretty confident in that. It's been a good camp. We're playing fast. Uh, again, we're healthy, knock on wood. Um, uh, and we've got some kids that uh, for, you know, they take a kid like Paul Grozzetti. I didn't mention him, but he's, he's another one of our starters up front. Um, you know, between he and, and Embler, uh, they are the staple up front for us. And, uh, they come all the time. They work hard. So their ethic is kind of translating, you know, through the mid-level and, and then the secondary. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a good camp so far. Yeah, it seems like you guys have, whether or not returning starters, but a good wealth of talent where guys have seen game action coming back on the field. Uh, you know, two areas that people always kind of touch on when they talk about defense is turnovers and creating pressure on, on quarterbacks. Where do those kind of fall with, with the mindset of the team? I know in past years we've talked a lot about turnovers because we've had a couple of years where we were a lot, you know, real heavy on the plus side. And then I think last year maybe we didn't create as many. Are those things that you focus on day to day? Yeah, yeah. I mean, part of our philosophy, we, we've got uh, 10 things, but really the top, one of the top three things is takeaways. Uh, we feel as if we can take away two a game, plus two a game, uh, our chances of, of being successful and coming out on top uh, exponentially rise. Um, so we 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 stress it a lot. We talk about ripping and stripping, uh, being physical at the point, uh, getting five or six guys around the ball. If you're late to the show, coming in, ripping and stripping. So, um, you know, that's as far as ball security. Our goals in the in the back end is to get you know two picks a game, and, and if not get two picks a game, get pressure enough pressure on the quarterback to make some bad decisions, um, and get a, get more three and outs than than uh, ten plus drives. So. Um, that's that's where we're at right now. I mean, that's that's kind of our our goal. So right now, okay, let's talk about the defensive backs, and, and we'll start at the cornerback position. And you mentioned them already. Ahmad Covington returns. He's a, a kind of a has been a staple starter for the last few years. So he'd be kind of that the the you know the, the senior leader, whatever you want to call it, that unit. But on the other side, you, you know, before uh, we were we were mentioned some of the young guys. What is what does that position hold for the Pioneers uh, with Ahmad on one side and maybe a little bit of competition on the other? Uh, it's I mean, being my third year, my, going back three years, I, I coached the corners, and we weren't very, very deep back then. Uh, we've got the luxury now of having really three corners. Uh, vying for the top spot. Not to say that Ahmad's got it locked in right. because sometimes he, um, you got to keep after him, and, and he's a very talented kid. But uh, you know, like anything else, if he's not going to work, uh, I'm trying to cultivate a culture where we've got three or four kids that they're rewarded for what they do. Uh, Ahmad is Ahmad. He does a great job. Uh, when he's on top of his game, he's as good as anybody in this league. 
Um, flipping over on the other corner, I mean, we've got to figure it out between uh, Ruben McIntosh, Stefan Thomas, who's a new kid out of Egg Harbor, New Jersey, and then uh, J.D. Roussel uh, out of Rhode Island. And those three kids uh, uh, have had a good a good goal of it so far. J.D. had a very good spring. He started out slow here in the fall. Um, but he's, he's, he's done well the last three days. So as far as the corner spots, I think we're going to be fine. One way or another, we'll have two out there that, it, that can compete um, and that I think can do the job. And in the back at the safety position, uh, again, uh, like you had mentioned, maybe some youth there. Uh, you, you had mentioned you move Alex Aikens over uh, spot and maybe incorporating a freshman. Talk about your safety, your two safety positions, and, and who Pioneer fans could look to see out yeah, there. I, I think they're going to they're going to see Alex Aikens. I, I kicked him from the strong safety over to the free, uh, just with the loss and, and graduation of uh, Titus McIntosh. Uh, Alex is a, is a is is a good kid. He's got the gray matter to, to give back there and the call of shots the way they need to be done uh i'm confident with him running the show back there our trick now is to, is to find somebody to, to supplement him back there which would be the strong safety and we're looking at a guy in right now actually two guys in gordon hill and connor candido um both of them are capable kids uh connor's got a, a little more of advantage just he's he, he was here in the spring with us so he's played gordon's just coming in from uh from new jersey and the, he's He's going to be a very good kid to watch down the road. He's gifted. He can run like a deer. Um, he'll fit it up. He, he just got a good, a good intuitiveness about the game. Uh, he's got the, you know, we've come and referred to as kind of the it factor, and, and Gordy's got it. Uh, but not to diminish, any one of those kids can play right now, and we're working both from, and that's not solidified either, which has been nice. They're challenged. They're challenging each other. So. All right, Coach. Well, thanks for a few minutes today, and uh, we'll catch up with you again uh, down the line as the season goes on. Awesome. Thank you much. All right, and we'll, uh, we'll please check back tomorrow as uh, we finish up preseason pass with Part 4, and we preview the quarterbacks and special teams.